snaking its way through the countryside of Southern Virginia. This beautiful 3.2 mile strip of asphalt has been around since 1957. But now for the second time in three years, the Virginia International Raceway is home to the SCCA National Championship runoffs. We are at a misty and fairly chilly Virginia International Raceway. It is the 59th running of the SCCA's National Championship runoffs. Today's coverage brought to you by Mazda is for the run to the gold in GT2. And Tom O'Gorman alongside, I'm Greg Creamer, Hayward Wagner uh, down in the pit lane. And uh, Tom, right before we came on here, uh, the top three rows in this field are all gold medalists in some capacity at the runoffs. Row four, guys that have finished second and have silver medals. Row five, filled with former gold medalists. This field is crazy deep. It is crazy deep and one of the most diverse classes you will find in SECA club racing. Taking a look at that grid right now and uh, and I'm, I'm so excited to hear from Hayward what tires are on what cars. Absolutely, and if you take a look, you saw that 04, if that looked familiar, we've seen that car run in this category many times over the years. It's the X Jim Goffrey Nissan 350Z wheeled at this race by none other than Tony Ave. So this, there's a lot to be paying some serious attention to here. And Tomo, right now, this track is always a place you have to pay a lot of attention to. It's tricky, it's demanding at three and a quarter miles, 17 turns, and with this misty conditions, that's exaggerated. It is, and also the diversity in this class will play heavily into the way this track makes its speed. So sector one, coming down into, sec into turn one, uh, this is kind of the mechanical grip section. You need a, a nice, nimble car that can change directions and accelerate nicely off of turn one through turns three, four, five, and six at the lower S's. Then we get into downforce territory, very high speeds up through the uphill S's in seven, eight, and nine, those iconic sweeps up the hill into South Bend. Gonna need a lot of downforce and stability there. Then we get into Oak Tree, a big dig onto the back straight at turn 12 high speed and big power into this sector uh, sector then we get into the uh, the roller coaster down towards hog pen uh, and what we know of the track conditions here now in the booth our cozy little booth is that more towards the end of the back straight and those final four corners are pretty damp right now we believe yeah it's been it, uh, the previous race a lot of uh drivers that's where they had their issues and of course uh giving us uh, an opportunity with a good weather update probably as well as some great information let's check in with hayward guys there's light mist but i wouldn't call it rain right now we have some very interesting tire stories in this race tony ave right here in the third spot full wets the two porsches behind them are on yokohama wets which is a really chunky wet tire but it does have a harder compound, so if it's intermediate conditions, they might be in a really good spot. The only two cars on the grid that rolled onto the grid on full tries, your pole sitter and outside front row. Everybody behind them is on a wet tire. Wow, this is gonna be interesting. Thanks, Hayward, that's absolutely fascinating to know. And uh, that's Aqualani, who has uh, 12 gold medals here at the runoffs. Um, and uh, this was his 20th pole. And uh, I'll tell you what, the defending champion, Tim Kesman, starts back in the fifth spot. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see with the front row on the wets and everybody, or on the dries and everybody else in some version of a wet tire. And if we get any more misting, if it, if it lightens up, uh, tire management could be huge. I think tire management is going to be very, very critical. But we have completely unpredictable conditions with the mist and the rain coming and going after the remnants of that hurricane. I think right now the risky but the call I would make are those dry tires. But again, we don't know what the race is going to finish like. We don't know what's going to happen in the middle. Uh, those first couple laps are going to be very high risk reward for our top two drivers. And we'll see how that plays out. This one of the uh, the older classes, always been a favorite class in SCCA national competition. First year it ran 1980 and uh, it evolved out of what we used to be called C production and B sedan. And that's what created GT2. And these can be absolutely from tube frame full built race cars with bodies hung on them uh, up through taking cars just modifying a stock car and the like uh, there's a lot of a mixture here and then you've got the gt cup cars uh, like these porsches uh, which are basically just turnkey so a lot of variety in this class and it's a big field so i'm going to try and get through the start order here uh, starting in the 23rd spot the number 88 robert kelly out of huntington beach california in the chevy camaro starting 22nd uh, the number 21 of 
Andrew Wright. And uh, he is driving uh, out of the Tennessee region in the Sunbeam Tiger, one of my favorite cars, starting in the uh, 21st spot, the number 98, seven-time gold medalist Pete Peterson out of Lumberton, North Carolina in the Peterson Automotive Toyota Celica. Not used to seeing him that far back in the start order. Starting in the 20th spot, the number eight of Michael Smelly out of Port, uh, Port St. Lucie, Florida, the Central Florida region in the speed-injected Mazda RX-7. Starting in the 19th spot, the 03 and Doherty out of Bainbridge Islands, Washington and Northwest region in her Porsche Cayman GT4 Club Sport. Starting in the 18th spot, number 38, William Moore out of Chagrin Falls, Ohio, Northeast Ohio region in the Chevy Camaro. Starting 17th, the number 13 is A. Sterling Cole out of Salem, New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire, the New England region of the renewable lubricants of Mazda RX-7. Starting in the 16th spot, number seven, Al Roland out of Mebane, North Carolina, the NCR region, uh, the uh, Morgan Lumber Company Chevrolet Camaro. Starting in the 15th spot, the number 18, Javier Bento out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, in the Interstate Batteries Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. Starting 14th, the number 64, Matt Gray out of Chaska, Minnesota, Land Lakes region, the Ryan Company's Ford Mustang. Starting 13th, the 01 of Jared Audrick out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania, and he is out of the Susquehanna region in the Porsche GT3 Cup car. Starting in the 12th spot, the number 68, Jason Fiorito out of Lake Traps, Washington, Northwest region in his Chevy Camaro. Starting in the 11th spot, the 165 is Jorge Nazario out of San Juan, Puerto Rico in the Texmania Chevrolet Corvette. Starting in the 10th spot, the 161, Thomas Herb, the first of our gold medalists out of Barrington, Illinois, Chicago region in his fall line Porsche. He's got a gold. Starting in the ninth spot, the number 50, Tom Patton, in one of my favorite cars all time in runoffs history competition, running out of Cincy region in the Hoosier Felice Engine Sunbeam Tiger. Starting in the eighth spot, the zero, Scotty B. White out of Auburn, Washington in uh, the Northwest region in his night transport Dodge Viper competition coupe. Starting in the seventh spot is uh, Kevin Allen, the number four out of Anderson, South Carolina in the Buccaneer region. Hoosier and FGR Racing Nissan. Those are the two guys who've never had golds, but have had uh, second place finishes. They've had silvers. Starting in the, in the uh, sixth spot, this is interesting, the 66 of Hans Peter out of Olaf, Kansas, and the Kansas City region. He uh, is a three-time gold medalist, but it's always been an open wheel stuff for the most part. He is now on board one of these Porsches. Starting in the fifth spot, the defending champ, the 144 of Tim Kesman out of Franksville, Wisconsin, the Milwaukee region in his fall line, Lemons of Love Porsche. Then out side of row two, starting fourth. Number 46, Mark Bowden, a four-time gold medalist. He's out of Winnetka, Illinois, out of Chicago region in the Wagner Custom Porsche Cup car. Starting in the third spot, as we talked about, that 04 of Tony Ave out of Baden, North Carolina, the Central Carolina region uh, entry. He is a two-time gold medalist, most recently winning uh, at Road America in 2020 in GT1. Uh, driving the ex-Goffrey Nissan. Then your front row, outside, Dan Bender out of North Brick, Illinois, running in the Chicago region, the number 36 Bravo Trailers Chevy Camaro. And on the pole, again, your 12-time gold medalist, the 33 of Andrew Aquilani, a 20th pole position for the driver out of Chester Springs, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia reason in the Phoenix Performance Hoosier Hawk and Mobile Chevrolet Corvette. This one, as we said, deep. And we're in the most important five corners of the warm-up lap, and unfortunately, they have to pack up and pair up and not experiment at all. This section of track, a little bit damp still, perhaps just a bit wet down at the bottom of the hill. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be really intriguing here. Everybody looking for a little bit of... Uh, any kind of grip as you're talking about, I'm sure they've been hearing, all right, this place is, uh, you know, these spots of the track a little diabolical. The Mazda, the official pace car of this year's runoffs, will be ducking into pit lane. And then it is all down to Andrew Aquilani and Daniel Bender as they are coming up and into the acceleration zone. And one thing about these cars, they have a little bit of arrow, they have a lot of power, and they will get moving. And a couple of cars into the pits doing tire changes, realizing maybe we're not on the right thing as we're green. Run to the gold in GT2 underway. Aquilani and Bender side by side in a big lunge. Is that uh, not quite sure who that was coming down to the inside? That would have been Ave and uh, didn't quite make anything stick there with Bowden on his shoulder as we clear turn one so far. Tomo, everything good, and Aquilani now leads out of two and heading into three. That was a lot of power for Tony Ave to get down the inside, but remember, everybody else on rain or intermediate tires, and we're seeing that already pan out as the top two cars starting to walk away just a little bit in those first couple corners. Uh, also note, we did have a couple cars not take the green. 
And, yeah, and, and I think a couple of them may have ducked into the pits looking for tire uh, conditions. And if you were on full wets and you drove around at that point, you may have gone, yeah, this is not the, uh, the tire I want at this stage. And I think those, those uh, uh, like uh, Bender's Chevy Camaro and a couple of the others in there, those are, in a way, they're sort of, are they based on the, on the Trans Am 2 car? They are. Trans Am 2 cars, yeah. so they're a full tube chassis. When I was talking to Danny Bender, he's like, there's just so much to adjust on this car. It's really easy to get wrong. They were struggling with power down a little bit, but the raw pace, and he was happy as well with his overall race pace. The longevity of that car was pretty solid. But it looks like Andrew Aquilani may be running an autocross compound Hoosier tire, the A7. He's just checking out as everyone else kind of getting up to speed. Yeah, he and he's just, he's one of those guys that he gets out on the track, and I mean, he's down to business immediately. And I've said for so many years, you race what you practice. And yeah. if you, and you've got to be really good at if you're going to win races, you got to be good right from the drop of the green. And Aqualani is maybe one of the best at that, isn't he? Really is. And maybe not even when the car is prime, but you got to be able to drive it at the limit 100%, no matter what the limit is. As we see Danny Bender now starting to pick up that pace just a little bit down the back straight, especially, was really, really quick. Uh, but uh, the uh, that car is going to take a little bit longer to come up to pace. Yeah, Mark Bowden on that opening lap, 156 miles an hour, top end down the back straight as we have a look here at Tony Abbott. But Bowden to the pit lane as well, and it was Tim Kesman that came in for drives the first time around. I think Bowden decided to do the same. Uh, luckily, they're one of the only teams that are probably equipped to actually pull off a tire change in about two minutes uh, as they're Bowden going for drives. And there it is. And, of course, Fall Line has, uh, has run in endurance-style racing where you've got driver changes and tire changes. Uh, they've got an understanding of it here. And as you would suspect, going to those full slicks, uh, the problem is, is you got to do one set of tires, uh, then you got to go and do the other side. You don't have four guys over the wall, so this just eats up time. And they just finished that tire change for Tim Kesman as well, who rejoins down at the back of the pack. Uh, but uh, it's Aqualani, Bender, Ave, Peter, Allen uh, are going to be your top five. And we know that Ave, Hans, Peter, and Kevin Allen all on some form of wet tire. They're just going to get driven away from in these conditions. Now, in this class, can you also hand cut tires and the like? So may they have uh, have uh, cut up some slicks given that there's three different options for for build level i think you can kind of match that build so a, a production based car i think has to run a production dot rain tire versus the full tube frame race cars can also run any sort of hand groove custom made or or race tire uh, for the rain all right and there is tony ave and i don't is that mist or is that the little smoke coming off of the back of his car i couldn't tell uh, there is Aqualani, and, and you were right. I mean, he just leapt out into the distance, but Danny Bender has uh, has stabilized that just a little bit, hasn't he? And if Aqualani did choose those A7 compound tires, or even the R7s, that car's going to work him pretty hard. And Danny sh did, did share with us that he's really happy with that overall pace of the radial tire. The hardest part about these uh, these bias ply, not radial, the bias ply tires yeah. on this car is they move around so much. He said the, the limit of adhesion is actually pretty tough to feel. That's a great point. And uh, his qualifying lap was only two tenths off of Andrew Aquilani. Then there was a bit of a gap back to the rest of the field. So Bender showing some, some pretty stout pace here in that Bravo Trailers uh, Chevy Camaro. And there's the gap from Bender sitting in second back to Ave in third. And uh, that just continues to open up a little bit. I mean, we're talking in uh, what now? Two, th three laps, that margin from the lead group to Tony is over 10 seconds. And Tony qualified within eight tenths of a second of the current race leader, Andrew Aquilani. Uh, so that's strictly down to the tire choice as now we're watching Jorge Nazario in his Corvette, that blue car up the inside of the Camaro, Jason Fiorito lets him go through pretty easily. That was a nice, nice pass and that puts him up into the sixth spot uh, for Jorge Nazario and uh, Fiorito staying right there and looking for any kind of an opportunity here. And uh, as you can see, uh, and oh, and here into the pits comes the 161 of Thomas Herb, uh, who also is a former gold medalist in runoffs competition and runs for that fall line team. Hearing from Hayward that fall line actually developed a strategy on that outlap. They were going to do one pit stop per car uh, for the first three laps. So they basically only have enough crew to do one pit stop at a time. Uh, it was uh, Kesman that got the first one, Bowden got the second, and Peter got the third. And that's... You know that's a team that's that's prepared. They've been doing this for a long time, and uh, you you know you look at at uh, what you can do in these in these situations, and you try and have a plan. Well, late lunge down to the inside there and made it work. But I'll tell you, you don't see a lot of passes into South Bend, and that was an aggressive move by Javier Vento in that Porsche. A lot of times when someone makes that move, 
you know they mean it. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of just go, oh, okay, fine, it's all yours. Yeah, I'll let you go through. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ready to uh, defend too much in this corner because uh, it's so diabolical on the exit here. So it's Aquilani over Bender, then a big gap back to Ave, Hans Peter, and uh, Kevin Allen, that uh, top five. But we're seeing some great racing in other spots of the track, and Javier Vento is really putting some laps down here. Here's a look at the number 13 of A. Sterling Cole and the uh, Mazda RX-7 out of Salem, New Hampshire. It's a great charge for this driver. Yeah, uh, for Cole, he came from uh, 17th on the grid, running 7th, up 10 positions, uh, and that maybe has to do with just executing uh, more of the car on these rain tires. You can see the skinny little rain tires tucked up under those big old fenders that he would normally have uh, the, the bigger tires in. But some drivers are less comfortable with the car moving around the way the rain tires do on the dry surface, uh, whereas Sterling Cole doesn't seem to care as much. Yeah, and he is uh, closing up in a big, big hurry here on the back of that Camaro. Is he, oh, he's going to do it. He's going to make the move that's really late. And that can often get you into big trouble. That's the battle for the eighth spot. And uh, Jason Fiorito uh, realized that, uh, you know, um, Cole was not quite there and elected to just go ahead and turn in. But now look at Cole square up underneath. And uh, th that car, I'm guessing, uh, that uh, little Mazda RX-7, that's a little bit lighter, probably a bit more nimble. Probably a lot lighter, and that's going to work the tire a lot less too. So he can he can kind of force the tire to, to do what it's doing now. You see the car is just squirming around. That's the tread pattern on the rain tires moving the car across the surface. The surface is completely dry, and that's going to be a big problem. Especially look at the dance from that yellow Mustang behind of Matt Gray. It's just going to burn the rears off that. Car. Well, whenever that's a, a really important thing I think to talk about is when you've got the sipes and thus the tread blocks in these in these tires, and a rain tire for it to work has got to be really soft because it has to generate heat. And a lot of heat comes from those uh, tread blocks flexing. And uh, if it overheats, they can start chunking. Ooh, that's a big save there by uh, a Sterling Cole. But those tires can literally chunk. And then they are, uh, they're almost as bad as slicks on the wet just because there's not there's no tire to it. Yeah, they tear themselves apart. Well, look at this. Danny Bender is closing this up. It's that margin is now down to under, under a second. And he sets fast lap in the going, a 153 flat. It's actually been faster than Aquilani all three of these four laps. The first lap, Aquilani pulled out that big lead, and then Bender has been slowly chipping away at it ever since, working lap five now. Uh, and it's usually only three or four tenths per lap, but he will get there at this rate. Well, and is that a function maybe of that car of Aqualani's being it's 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 more much more stock derived, a lot of power, and thus it's it's got some weight. It'll get those tires to come up to temperature faster, and then as Bender you know starts to work at it, that car uh, might take a little longer to get the uh, the tires where you want it. But once they do, he's going to be quick. It will, and also Hayward confirmed Hoosier A7 compound on that Corvette, which is meant to get up to pace by turn two at an autocross, you know, 15 seconds. So he's good to go out of the pit lane on that Corvette, and then they just consistently kind of fall off, which is kind of what we're seeing here. And it, it really doesn't take much for the bias ply tire on Danny Bender's Camaro to come up, uh, but it was just enough that Aquilani knows exactly what he's got, and he gained that advantage, but it seems to be dissipating very quickly. Yeah, I think he was uh, hoping using those tires he'd have a lot more of an advantage before things equalized a little bit and uh, Danny Bender proving that uh, he was not going to just let him rock it off into too big of a distance here and he is closing it up it's down to now a batter of car lengths and it's not to say the A7 will fall off too badly it should maintain a pretty decent pace and Aqualani's been getting quicker but it just starts that quick and stays that quick whereas Bender is getting quicker and quicker and quicker uh, ultimately the production based chassis Cor Corvette is uh, a little bit heavier I think and a little bit less power uh, so the power to weight of the cars is certainly not to Aqualani's advantage but I think the tech and the style build kind of offsets that to an extent and again bender resets fast lap and that margin now down to under half a second so uh, exactly what you're talking about here uh, right now bender is hunting i think and uh, still tony ave stay, stays in that third spot but way way back and kevin allen uh, a lot closer to ave than he has been along with hans peter as well so uh, ave could be really uh, in a scrap here coming up for that final medal position Nice job by that car. I think that's Scotty White uh, just getting out of the way and letting those guys go. Oh, look how that really held up Aquilani just that little bit. And now Bender is there. And if he can stay close, 
working their way up through these uh, S's and up through Oak Tree. Who knows what we may see happening down into the roller coaster. Man, the confidence and the, the way the car is handling in the uphill S's for Aqualani is spectacular. It I is. hope we get a repeat of that shot next lap because it's something to be seen. But Bender just closes right back up on the dig off this corner. You see him struggle to put the power down a little bit. But towards the end of this straightaway, watch the straight line speed of that TA2 Camaro come alive. One thing Aqualani has always loved is, here we go, Bender gets that run, got a little toe, he's up along the side and drives on by. Now, Aqualani, this is uh, something he's known for when he gets past. He loves to do a quick counter punch. That was beautiful. And anti-lock brakes helping there for sure as well. Uh, no, not nearly as much technology, and in including anti-lock brakes for the, for the Camaro. So uh, he's doing all of it with his left foot. Aqualani, bravery, knowledge, and technology coming together there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, as I was about to say before Danny made that, uh, that pass is, you know, you watch Andrew in uh, all particularly the other classes where he's driving the Mustang. That, you know, inside front tire over curves is, you know, oftentimes a foot or two in the air, it seems like. He is absolutely brilliantly confident. And Phoenix, it doesn't matter if it's a Fed, a Mustang, whatever, they just seem to get these beautifully compliant setups on these cars uh, that, that their drivers can just hammer. Even taking the championship in Touring 4 on the opposite end of the spectrum here <laughs> exactly. did Phoenix performance. And he actually clued us in a couple of days ago during qualifying that if it was raining, he was going to whip out the T1 Mustang and race it here in GT2 because it's that much better in wet conditions. I think even just in car choice alone, let alone tire choice, that's an indicative of, of obviously the conditions that they were expecting. Boy, look at the back of Bender's Camaro. They're just dancing through the snake. And now coming up on some traffic, and they might catch that traffic right in the... Uh, Nope, he's far enough up the road. They're not going to catch him in these climbing S's, but they're certainly going to catch him right as they come out of uh, South Bend here, I would think. Let's see if that car, he just stays off to the left. Here comes Akalani. Does he see? He does. He sees Bender. He stays out of the way. Nice job. Bender's got a little bit of a push there in uh, in Oak Tree. Just watching his, uh, his, his front wheels there, Tom Owen. He just definitely could not get that turn quite as much. Look at that, Aqualani moving over and uh, trying. He doesn't, he has to make it possible. He can't just drive him off the track, but he sure doesn't have to make it easy. And uh, that's exactly what he did. And then here it comes again. That time, I don't think Bender realized that he was up alongside like that. And there was just a little bit of a scrape there as uh, Aquamani went through, and that was putting those ABS brakes to full use. Yeah, big time. And you are allowed one move uh, to protect. You're not allowed to block in response. So that was perfect. Oh, a big, awkward held up for Aquilani and Bender's got nowhere to go but into the back of him gives him a big shove down the front <laughs> straightaway uh, but once you drive a driver to the grass like that that's game on they've, they've yep. told you hey we're racing and I'm going to push you all the way to the grass Bender doing the same thing in the braking zone it's just tougher to judge that I think it was fairly fair and I'm glad to see neither car cut a tire or anything else yeah and that was William Moore that uh, uh, they just went by there again doing a nice job not trying to help getting in the way and letting him through as this great battle continues we need to take a quick break of, and uh, just say a big Thank you to a number of the partners that make our broadcast possible, but we will be right back to the run for the gold in GT2. Focus, guys. We're in a race to the finish, okay? Here's where the rubber meets the road. These initiatives move the needle like at all. Well, let's shift gears a minute. We're really kind of at the apex here. We need to put the pedal to metal. We need to nail those hairpin turns, cross that finish line, and take that checkered flag. Woo! Hit the track with the world's largest motorsports calendar, track day insurance, and more. Haggerty, let's drive together. Introducing the first ever Mazda CX-50. An incredible battle for the lead and the gold medal here at VIR in the run for the gold in GT2 at this 59th running of the SCCA's National Championship runoffs. Our coverage presented by Mazda, and it's Andrew Aquilani from pole, Danny Bender from outside of the front row. Aquilani opened up a lead of a couple of seconds early, and then Bender has chipped at it, chipped at it, chipped at it, and Bender has actually 
been in the lead a couple of times and uh, going down that long back straight, Tomo, and then Aquilani with the ABS uh, just slings it down the inside, takes that lead back. Uh, and right now, Bender, he, I think he is just hounding Aquilani, hoping he can run that heavier Corvette off his tires. Yeah, both drivers pushing so, so hard as they're continuing to work through lap traffic. Again, the only two drivers that chose dry tires for the green flag. Now this driver switched to dry tires at the green flag. He lost a lot of track position, but he didn't lose a lap. Mark Bowden is running in uh, now the seventh position as the third fastest car on track uh, and quickly picking off everybody that's kind of floundering on those uh, wet tires. Yeah, and Bowden has been literally running up to 10 seconds a lap faster than the drivers in front of him. Vento, Peter, and Kevin Allen and Ave. So he is going to be making up some big, big chunks of time here. Once again, Andrew Aquilani up into Oak Tree. There's Bender, that close, on the throttle. Big run down this back straight. Let's see, Bender, we've been seeing some pretty good top end out of that Camaro, haven't we? Yeah, it's usually only two or three miles per hour, but it is, it's mostly in this portion of the straightaway as the arrow wall kind of comes into effect before the top speed is hit that that Camaro is really, really strong. But then watch what happens every single time on the brakes. It's almost a full bore deeper for the Corvette as he goes all the way in to, uh, to, to the ABS for this corner. And then they trundle on down the roller coaster. I guess trundle in the roller coaster is not really the way to put it. You're falling down the face. Uh, of this large, large uh, elevation gain here. Down through one of the trickiest corners in uh, all of racing is that uh, the Hogpet turn, turn 17. And now this blast down the front straight. And, uh, interesting to see here. And this is some of the battling that's going on behind. There's the 66 of Hans Peter. And a brilliant move there by Javier Vento. Got him loosened up coming out of turn four and knifed underneath him into five. Peter really struggling. And uh, at that point, I think he just sort of moved over and let Mark Bowden slide through. And uh, Bowden is absolutely hooked up right now. There he is, that beautiful blue and black fall line. Porsche, a lot of experience here at the runoffs. Bowden making his 37th start. He often runs two classes, so uh, uh, you build those starts up in a hurry, but he has just already, in short order, caught the back of Javier Vento. And uh, now it's just an absolute drag race, and these two cars should be pretty similar on top speed. So we use that little bit of a draft time, and now pops to the inside. And on those dry tires, as soon as they hit the brakes, that's going to become very apparent. The Porsche just bounding over the curbs, carrying the front tires off onto that front, uh, that back straightaway was really cool to see. But now uh, Bowden moves himself. He's only got two more cars to get a bronze medal, and I think he's going to catch them pretty quick. Tony Ave running third, Kevin Allen running fourth in the pair of uh, silhouette-bodied uh, Nissans. Yeah, and that battle for that final podium spot up in front of Mark Bowden here is huge. I mean, it's three-tenths of a second now between the 0-4 of Tony Ave and the number four of Kevin Al Allen. And uh, Bowden, obviously, we're going to see him make that big jump. He ga gained a number of spots. So it's seventh to fifth, and it's about eight seconds that he is adrift of the battle in front of him, which continues to be absolutely superb. Here it is, the 0-4 of Ave and the, zero and the number four of Allen. And these two guys... Uh, I'll tell you what, the, uh, certainly Ave's had goals before. Allen has had a number of silvers, never won the gold. But uh, right now, this is a great battle in and of its own right. Uh, two cars that really aren't on the best tire for the conditions, but having a great scrap. Well, that's going to make this tons of fun to watch because a lot of the best racing comes out of poor grip. And these guys both on rain tires in the dry. Looks like the, the power for Tony Ave, a little bit of the advantage, where maybe a bit more handling for mm -hmm. Kevin Allen in the chase position in the slightly older bodied uh, uh, 300 ZX. But Bowden is coming really, really quick. Well, that's a, yeah, the, uh, just to give you the, the count on that, folks. Ave last lap at 2.023, Allen at 2.026, Bowden at 157.4. I mean, he is coming, he is steaming his way up toward the front here. As we could expect, uh, and, and then to put that in reference further, the leaders lapping in the 153s and 54s. Uh, so they are still in a, in a league of their own, even amongst the drivers that did switch to those dry tires. Yeah, and I mean, there's uh, Aquil uh, Aquilani and Bender. They are just, you know, not that these guys aren't good shoes, but Aquilani and Bender, uh, really, they're just one with those cars right now. And, uh, you know, you're really fighting this as you've got those those very abused rain tires on this dry track. 
you see the back of uh, Ave's car just floating. You can see the rear tire before he turns the front wheels uh, as it comes into view when driving at us, just moving around all over the back of that car. And uh, it looks like he's got a little bit more pace. Ooh, Kevin Allen, though, with a good run this time. Yeah, looks way over to the inside, but then right about there is where that car just picks up the uh, speed here. A couple of Nissans. And uh, of course, this one uh, has that, that newer body style. The one behind him, a little bit older body style. Look who's there. Boat, boom, that fast. He's on top of them. It's going to make quick work of them, too. But uh, again, not to their uh, discredit in what they're doing on track. They're driving on much uh, more insufficient tires than Bowden is. Bowden just straight lines to the apex, slides underneath Kevin Allen. Now he's just going to feed it through the snake here. And I don't know that he's going to be able to, well, you know, we'll have to see. I mean, he's got so much more grip. I don't know that he's going to be able to get Tony because of the of the uh, serious grunt in that Nissan's engine before getting into these S's. He could not. So now it's just going to be a matter of, I think he's going to maybe try him going up into Oak Tree. Let's see what happens here. Looks. To the inside, low, got that little bit of moisture, but made it work. He's through. That is a new bronze medalist if it were to end right now. Mark Bowden doing the job, but look at this battle up front. It is still furious. All the meanwhile watching that, kind of keeping an eye on sector times, and Danny Bender was faster by almost a full second last time through sector three, which has brought him this close on this lap coming into Oak Tree. That battle we were just watching, these guys about to lap the second or the now fourth and fifth place cars. It's just incredible the pace that these guys uh, have been running here. And a lot, yeah, I mean, obviously right tire went with the dries uh, and the track has done nothing but get drier. And uh, they are really putting on a show, but still that's a massive margin. There's a broken down car yeah. on the driver's side of the track or on the driver's right of the track. That's a, it's about maybe 50 feet of yellow between the flag just to, to the left of frame and that car. Uh, unlikely, but if Danny Bender was to try to make a pass between that yellow flag and that car, it wouldn't be allowed. That's a little bit of an awkward zone for yellow to be. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and that is the rule. That is the car, the number 13. That is off that Sterling Bull, who had a pretty good run going earlier. And hate to see that kind of a problem here. Uh, but the rule is from the flag to wherever the incident is, the car is, whatever. That is absolutely no passing, strictly verboten. And so if he gets that kind of a run, he's going to have to give a little bit of it up, then make the move once he gets past. So uh, we'll see how, how that plays out. But uh, this is just such a fascinating duel. Two very different types of builds on these cars, and yet running this close. Ooh, Andrew Aquilani bounding over that curb, back end dancing, uh, but well within uh, his control. Here. We had our in-car video set up for, I believe, the 13th starter, Jared Odrick, who's going for a big ride in his Porsche. There he is rejoining just in front of Mark Bowden. we got to cut, cut to that at a scary moment. I'm not sure what was happening, <laughs> but we haven't seen his camera angle for a couple of laps. Um, very, very hazy in that car. Yeah, it looked like he maybe had uh, was bitten by the uh, hog pen. <laughs> it's, it's, it's taken a chunk out of a number of drivers here so far in this event up through Oak Tree one more time. Let's see what Bender can do. You know, and the one thing is, at a certain point, after that car's been there for a couple of laps, sometimes they will drop it. They say, everybody's seen it. It's part of the race course. Let them go. So we'll see Bender again getting that run. But his problem is, is he's got to be much more alongside, and if not completely clear, just because of the braking capability of that car. Yeah, it's so, so strong in the breaking zone. And they did indeed pull that yellow flag down, so the, the back straight is fully green at this point. Uh, last time through, we saw no yellow standing there. And we are going to be completing lap 12, starting 13. As we come by here, let's see what I'll tell you. That, on that long, long straight, you know, looking at it, Bender just set fastest trap speed, 160. Point three, getting a bit of a toe, of course, from Aquilani as well, who's at a 154. Uh, Bowden a little quicker than that. Ave, uh, 155. So 
Uh, but that's a big difference that Bender has on Aquilani, and that's why Andrew is peddling for everything he's worth everywhere else on this track. And this race being dry among the faster classes has just evaporated. We're working the penultimate, or second to last lap, I should say. Uh, and, and from a driving perspective, yes, maybe this race hasn't been side-by-side, -side door banging, the best racing, swapping positions, but this is the most intense a race can get for a driver. When you have to put these qualifying laps back to back to back to back, the car deteriorating, lapping traffic, very <laughs> intense stuff right in front. There's so much going on that while for us spectating, it maybe doesn't look like Spec Miata looks all the time. This is so, so intense. Oh, it's intense. It's compelling uh, because one mistake and, you know, the guys by you and, and as you said, you have to be driving nigh unto perfect here to either maintain your position or for Danny not to lose the run. And uh, here we go. Thankfully for certainly Aquilani, that yellow flag has been pulled. But the thing is, is he's not quite as quick as these Porsches in a straight line. And you've got those two side by side again. And had they touched up in front, that would have been really nasty as they're coming up here. And I think that's uh, Vento and Kesman. And uh, they're in their own little race. So they're not just going to move out of the way. They certainly don't have to. Now, Andrew, late move. Boy, that is exactly what he needed to do. Great job there by Vento in the red number 18, recognizing that if one guy's coming through, there might be another one. But right there, Aquilani, he had to jump all over the brakes because Kesman had no idea he was there. And this has brought Bender closer than he's been in a while. But again, no place for Aquilani to go. Side by side up in front of him. Now he's going to be able to slide through. Bender going, oh, just let me come along here. Is he going to dive to the inside? He looked at it. Now he's looking to the outside, and there's still a ton more traffic. Aggressive move as uh, Aquilani just got underneath Kesman's. I don't think there was contact, but Kesman sort of awkwardly got moved out of the way. There definitely was contact. They just took the okay. white flag, and they're passing the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. They're not just lapping any cars on track. This is a very significant battle as well, and he has no patience. He's not having it. Yeah, he just absolutely squared up, said, I got to go. Sorry, Tony. They have lapped fourth spot right yeah. now. This is absolute dominance. Yes, it comes down to tire choice and the like, but still in all, last lap, more traffic up in front. Has Bender been keeping anything in reserve? And does Aquilani have anything he can do uh, in terms of defense? Man, he is all over the curbs in the climbing S's. That car bouncing up and over anything and everything. Here we go, traffic up in front into Oak Tree. He's gonna catch him right there, he knifes underneath. Bender has got to get through. That's going to compromise Bender's exit. This may have been his shot, and he got squeezed there a little bit. This may have been exactly what Aqualani lead, and he put more traffic and a fast Porsche. A very fast Porsche. Probably going to encounter in the braking zone, but I agree. Bender just got the wrong place at the wrong time for that lap traffic. He pulls alongside one last time. This is the last lap. See what he does. Does he have anything here? Could not get it done. Again, that ABS paying. Now he dives down the inside. Aqualani turns in. Contact. Still contact. Bender around the outside. Aqualani was sideways. And the fact, I think what helped Aqualani was he kept turning into Bender, and that's what straightened him out. But Bender into the lead, down through Hogpen, onto the front straight. Does Aqualani have any kind of a drive, anything he can do? And will that pass stand? That's the other side of the coin here. As down and across the line we go, Bender officially takes the win, but Aqualani, I'm sure, is going to feel aggrieved. And you can see that little bit of damage on the left front of Bender's car. That is going to be telltale here. Wow, what a finish here. Traffic playing a key role here. And was he alongside? Was that uh, still too aggressive? I mean, so much that the stewards are going to be mulling over here. But I'll tell you what, the, the, the aggressiveness of Aquilani into this corner on that last lap was incredible. But watch it here, Tomo. Man, he just gets a little bit deep. I, don't, I really don't know how to call that, and I'm yeah. glad it's not my job to. But that was a big contact moment between the two leaders. You could almost read the frantic energy from both cars oh, yeah. for over a lap before that happened. With all the lap traffic, with all of the amount of push they had to do to get that last lap in, uh, and, and the patience went out the window, and I agree with that call, that uh, absolutely you got to do what you got to do to get the gold medal. Uh, a little quieter race for this man running in third, but man, uh, very intense, very intense for the week.
Absolutely. You know, uh, and obviously everybody here behind Bowden, Ave, Kesman, and Allen, they're done because they were lapped. So Bowden, nobody on the track right now uh, for him to trundle around and pick up that medal. But I'll tell you what, uh, I'd love to see a replay again. And I, uh, of when on the starting the last lap, when they went into turn four, when Aqualani just squared up and went to the, I mean, he, the back end could have come around. I mean, it was massively aggressive on his part. He knew what was coming. Yeah, and again, he had just seen the white flag. He's coming up on traffic, the battle yep. for fourth place. None of those drivers can uh, disappear. They're not supposed to disappear, and they're also battling for a top five at the runoff. So uh, it was a very, very awkward uh, moment that was created for that entire last lap. Uh, and I think everybody, I really think everybody did a good job managing it, other than, again, you could just see how frantic and oh, how, how, how intense every single car's body language was. Yeah, what patience. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you, Bowden here, um, you know, interesting, if they would have shown up on the line with, with slicks, with dries, that would have been a whole different race for Mark Bowden. But what a recovery drive. Yeah, I for mean, all. pitting and coming back and still getting up into the medals. Absolutely phenomenal. Watch this here. Look how aggressively he turns it. That back end could have, I mean, it, he slid when he made that move. Wow, unbelievable, the commitment of Aquilani and then Bender going, well, you open the door, I'm just going to jam through it here. Wow, what, I mean, it, this all kind of started there, but they're, I mean, they are in the midst of this entire pack of cars. And there you can see the wrinkle on the left front corner of Danny Bender's car as he has arrived down into our interview area. And of course, that helmet is going to be coming off and then we're going to be, uh, as always, uh, if you're running Hoosier, you end up wearing the Hoosier necklace, as we call it, uh, that they put on. But there's the telltale, and that's what's going to be looked at, I'm sure, by everybody in race control. But, you know, however it turns out, one thing you cannot, de you cannot deny, Hayward, that was one exciting finish. You looked like you had one shot and you took it. Yeah, you know, uh, the TA, these TA2 cars were amazing. I had a little bit on them on the straights, but he had a little bit under braking. And, you know, I think he felt comfortable going in uh, to the top of the roller coaster there. Left the door just a little bit open. I said, this is the only opportunity I'm going to get. You know, last lap of the runoffs, you know, he squeezed me under braking earlier in the race. We made a little contact. So, you know what? Racing's racing and uh, it's a win, baby. Did you think you could get the pass clean? I thought so. I at least thought I could get, you know, next to him and we just sort of go side by side. You know, he turned in a little sharper than I maybe thought he was going to, which led to a little bit more contact. But um, again, you know, I, the door is open and, you know, here, I watched Senna last night. That's always my motivation. And if you don't go for a hole that exists, you know, it's what we're here for. Well, you definitely went for it. Congratulations on the gold. You get to take a victory lap. Let's go. All right. You can see the energy there. And let's go back now and take a look at what they're talking about. Looked like Andrew had him here because Andrew's been so good into the brakes, Tom. But right there, he leaves that little bit open, but he's turning in. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's tough for me to say, and I'm a little nervous, too, to be honest. But I think Bender saw that Aqualani was on a trajectory to run just about a, about a half a car width off the apex, came off the brakes, and saw the, the gap open up. Uh, it wasn't a full gap. I, I won't say it's a full gap. Well, now we'll hear from our silver medalist and his take on things. Hayward? Andrew, it looked like you had the race under control. Last couple of laps really working through the traffic well and then some contact at the top of roller coaster. First of all, let me thank all of our Phoenix Performance crew, Hawk Brakes, Hoosier Tires, this car was amazing, Penske Shocks, Mobile One Fluids, Ron Davis Radiators, this, everybody on the crew who helped, mom and dad. Man, we made some uh, Hail Mary changes, get to the grid and everything's drying up and it, uh, it worked really well. The only problem is, is that we had somebody who believes they're a pro driver running in a club series and if you want to play those games well this isn't bumper cars so you hit somebody at the apex in the rear bumper square and knock them out of the way that's not how we do it here I hope he gets tossed out of the club quite frankly the other thing is is that a bunch of our other fellow GT2 drivers who were being lapped were rather disrespectful to our lead battle this sort of stuff is why this runoffs has been a little bit of a pain in the butt in terms of getting quality track time and we just all got to clean this up well, definitely a lot of emotions from Andrew. I suspect this one will be looked at uh, into the evening hours, and we will see where it all ends up. Yeah, he is a bit frustrated, a bit angered right there. I mean, uh, you know, and again, uh, going for a uh, – and it's tough to keep track with, uh, with Andrew because he runs so many classes. I think he's going for his 13th gold. 
Could be four teams. I'm not sure. But nonetheless, um, uh, obviously huge emotion there. And let's get back down to Hayward real quick. You know, it always rings true. First place is thrilled to be here. Second place is disappointed. And Bronze is just glad to get to stand on a box. I'm going to take it as a win. We messed up the call. Uh, we got some bad information. And I got out there. I'm like, guys, <laughs> are we ready? And they said, yep. And we put up a plan as a team uh, since Tim was on the uh, inside. He dipped in. And I came in. And our guys are, I mean, they just busted their butts getting that pit stop done. And, uh, you know, those tires just would not have made it. But, uh, yeah, thanks to SCCA and, and all the corner workers and everybody standing out through all this uh, beautiful weather, um, I'll take two podiums and uh, go home. Congratulations on the bronze. Thank you. Yeah, and that's, I mean, he, he's such a class guy. You know, he understood, you know, the scenario. And it, yeah, that's one of those, you make the best of what you've got. And uh, he knew they, uh, they'd messed up the call. Let's fix it immediately and see what happens. You never know what's going to happen in these races as you take a look at the unofficial results again. Bender, uh, the winner, and getting the gold. Aquilani second, Mark Bowden third, Abe and Kesman finishing fourth and fifth, uh, and then Kevin Allen in sixth, Vento, Herb, Peter, and uh, Jorge Nazario rounding up the top ten. And again, the top two drivers lapping all the way up through for a spot. And uh, down to tire choice to be sure, but uh, wow, what a, a, an absolutely fascinating race. And I, you know, I get what Andrew Aquilani was, uh, was saying, Tomo, because uh, you know, this is a club. Uh, it, it isn't pro racing. And as you take a look at the uh, highlights here, you can see there's your front row and Aquilani uh, easing ahead here. And uh, I mean, Bender was always filling his mirrors. It didn't take long for these two to start checking out a little bit. And that was that killer first lap that kind of gave Andrew yeah. the breathing room that he needed to kind of uh, get that gap. We had a bunch of cars on the wrong tire trying to figure it out for that entire first lap. That was Sterling Cole making his way up through a bunch of cars before a mechanical failure. Here was that first pass for the lead. Aqualani easily threw on the brakes, and this is going to happen a couple more times in this highlight package, I suspect. Uh, and we saw that again multiple times. Bender, this is where he tried to pinch him to the grass. Left him just enough, still fair enough. And then uh, uh, Bowden, all the meanwhile, working his way back to the podium. Yeah, and I, you know, I saw that splash of water when Bowden hit it off to the inside of the track, and I went, oh, my, but they made it work. But here it is. There's that contact. And eventually they both straightened out. Bender had the momentum, was able to run down and make it through. And, uh, you know, I, you know, Aquilani's uh, comments about the, the, uh, the uh, club racing and the like, but at the sharp end of things, uh, this is fierce competition, and you're going for gold in the runoffs, and that means the world. And so not surprised to see some pretty intense running. Definitely. And uh, all it's super entertaining. No, no question <laughs> about that. We forgot about that part. You and I both leaned forward the entire race that time, and yeah. I don't even remember where the last 15 laps have gone, but it was a ton of fun to watch. Yeah, edge of the seat stuff to be sure. That wraps up our uh, coverage of uh, the Run to the Gold in GT Grand Touring 2. Coming up next will be Formula Continental, a great class as well. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Greg Creamer, and on behalf of Tom O'Gorman and Hayward Wagner, our entire Apex Productions crew and the entire SCCA national staff, thank you so much for joining us here for our coverage of the 59th running of the SCCA's National Championship Runoffs from VIR. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Following the race, Daniel Bender was issued a two-position penalty, moving him to third in the final podium results. Andrew Aquilani therefore claimed the win, and Mark Bowden was promoted to second. Why race? Because it's in our blood. A love of driving that pushes us as hard on the road as it does on the track. It's why we reinvented the Roadster and put a piece of it into every car we make. It's why we refine, rethink, and refine again. And it's why we'll always engineer to your heart's BPM. Not simply an engine's RPM. Why race? Why?